Hello and welcome gentlemen. I'm very excited to meet all of you during this uh, round table discussion and have free flowing thoughts uh, coming in from you to understand the business environment. Thank you all for joining us. We bring to you Mint Tech Transformations Doing More With Less in association with Microsoft. Through the course of our discussion today, we'll be diving deep into the secrets of achieving productivity, collaboration, exceptional employee experiences, and much more uh, with a panel of highly esteemed industry leaders. And it is my absolute pleasure to introduce all of you to each other and welcome you to this roundtable discussion. I have with me Mr. Bhaskar Basu, Country Head, Modern Work Solutions, Microsoft India. He's right beside me. And I'd also like to uh, welcome Mr. Vishwajit Singh, Director IT at Stria India Private Limited. We have Mr. Anurup Segal, Cluster IT of uh, Fortis Healthcare, um, Cluster IT Lead, Fortis Healthcare. We have Mr. Nikhil Anand, HR Head, Dr. Lal's Bat Labs. We have uh, Mr. Piyu Shagarwal, Director, Digital Innovation and Enterprise Architecture, Nagaro. We also have with us Mr. Sambuta Chaudhary, Head of IT and Digital Transformation, Tata Power. And uh, I would like to welcome all of you on board today. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. And uh, we look forward to listening from all of you. But before I start, I want to start first with uh, Bhaskar. You know, you, you have so much experience, decades of experience on how you build teams which are strong. They adhere with each other. They compete within each other and they deliver excellence. So um, do you believe that productivity can be achieved in our modern hybrid uh, work environments now? Earlier, what it was, uh, you know, was the need of the hour. But now, you know, it's seen as a choice. Do you think we can um, uh, bring in greater productivity? And is the meaning of what is productive changed from what it was earlier to what it is now, given the, you know, emergence of new technologies and the new way people are looking at hybrid working? Okay, uh, first up, thanks for having us, having me here. And it is a true pleasure to be sitting amongst all of you. Um, I had a, I had the chance to speak with Vishwaji Piyush some time back, but uh, just absolutely inspired by the participation that all of you have brought forth to this to this evening, and even the rich mix of experiences across digital innovation, HR, um, IT. Um, I think just I, I'm really looking forward to a very very strong and um, I would say a learning conversation where we can look and learn from each other. So Anisha, to you, look. Uh, I think there were a certain set of sub questions. So kind of let me take it uh, one one at a time and hopefully some parts of it would resonate with, with all of us here. Look, um, let me start by saying that um, we're living, we're all living in a period of intense change. And yet there are certain elements of, I would say, things which are still being constant over the last several years. Um, I won't bore you with how things were before and how things were in COVID and how things are. But I think uh, I will, however, say that just just let's pause and reflect on some of the learnings we have had around us. And I think some of these learnings are still very, 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 very pallid. Uh, some time back, all of us were grappling with great attrition, uh, right? Um, you and I, we were just talking, right? Uh, uh, employees were getting fanciful offers all around us. They still do. Uh, so we call that the period of the great resignation. People were resigning all around us. Uh, fast forward today, uh, at least in the tech industry, uh, there is a period of intense, I would say, economic challenge around us. People are still front and center of what we're trying to do, but instead of having to work with attrition, we are, we are uh, looking at uh, how we engage and ensure that people are still willfully uh, uh, committed to the organization. I think at one point of time, we were talking about abundance. And why abundance? Because look, we were not going to the office, but there was abundant digital infrastructure that we were talk, uh, talking about giving to our people. <clears throat> and suddenly we're talking about frugality. I think the whole idea, this whole term doing more with less is very powerful. Because I think uh, we all want to do more all the time, but obviously resources, people resources, infrastructure resources are diminishing rapidly. But I think the one thing that we learned clearly during the COVID period and even now, is that the people agenda has become more important than ever before. Uh, I think every leader in the organization, every manager in the organization uh, needs to have a very clear foundation of what it takes for us to engage our people. Now, 
at Microsoft, we we do a fairly intentional research once in six months. We call that the Work Trend Index. Uh, we basically talk to people to understand what's happening at, at your side. Why do you like to come to office? Uh, you know, why why would you want to come to office? Uh, what what is engaging you? What does your manager say? Uh, why would you leave? Uh, how long would you stay if you, if you did? Right. So a variety of thematic questions about one's belongingness, one's uh, connection, one's productivity, uh, to your point, and what basically inspires people to stay at the organization. And we had three very strong learnings. The first one was that, look, um, more and more organizations are being driven towards outcomes. Uh, Piyush, uh, Vishwajit, you're talking about, see the flexibility, come three days a week, you know, come in the morning, log off, continue. But look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you accountable to outcomes. I don't really care if it's 12 hours a day, if you're working on a Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, having said that, there are there's still a very strong mindset of many business leaders that look, I need to be able to calibrate how many people are coming to office, how many hours are being spent, and therefore the productivity paranoia is still fairly strong, and that I think one of the, is one of the biggest challenges of the people experience. The second thing that we learned when we spoke to people was that why do you come to office? You don't come to office because your leader has mandated it or or said that look, uh, uh, there's fancy coffee at office. You come because the social capital. Uh, you believe that you're engaging with your colleagues, with leaders, you get inspired, and that's why you come to office. And the third thing we've learned is that people stay when there's a connection to the organization. People don't necessarily say it's because of money. Yeah, money, of course, is a great motivator. But when there's a pathway to growth, when there's a pathway to development, learning, connection to the mission, vision, values of the organization, when there's engagement and, and, and an individual truly belongs, people stay. I think these have been very, very fundamental elements of what we refer to as bits of employee experience. And to your question, Anisha, when, when we spoke and went deeper on employee experience, what is employee experience? You know, uh, during the COVID time, the word mental well-being became almost synonymous to employee experience. But when we peel the onion, we realized employee experience is far more. It's about well-being. It's about insight to understand what an employee is feeling. It's about learning. It's about the clarity of goals, it's about skilling, it's about purpose, it's about engagement. And the sum totality of all is what is employee experience. And employee experience is that one definitive change or the focus thereof, which is clearly a very important agenda for today. That's the first thing that we learned. The second thing that we learned was, look, uh, uh, employee experience gets manifested in many different ways, but to your point, collaboration, uh, and therefore, productive collaboration, not artificial collaboration, because many of us do calls for the sake of doing calls. But if employee experience is pivoted on, on collaboration, which drives outcomes, it's far more meaningful to the individual and to the organization. The third thing we have learned is that there is a very new, uh, I would say, kind of workforce which is, which is emerging. We, we spoke about uh, age diversity, youngsters, and, and you know, I would say incumbent employees. But we're also learning that, you know, new kinds of workers, gig workers, I'll work on contract. I'll work for six months and I'll move on to doing something else. Uh, frontline workers, people who are your frontline on the street, possibly selling an insurance plan or a credit card or being your interface to the last, uh, to your customer, right? The digital experience we're providing to that frontline worker is clearly very important. So I think that's what I would say is in terms of learning, right? So employee experience has become front and center. Uh, the way we're looking at productivity and collaboration has clearly changed. It's not just about being more efficient, but it's being about more productive together. New kinds of workers like frontline and geek workers are coming to play. And I think as organization leaders, it's very incumbent of each of us to kind of take bit by bit and try to try to solve for it. Now, I'm not here to do a product pitch. Um, yes, Microsoft is party to it, but I do want to say that one thing that we pride ourselves to do is to listen very, very consciously and intentionally. Because I think product design and I think solution design needs to be based as a result of uh, responding to intent, responding to signals. And, and for us, we've basically curated multiple canvases. Um, this, this whole idea about employee experience has become very important for the last couple of years. We have shaped it an entirely new category. Uh, we call that Microsoft Viva. And things about engagement, connection, social capital, learning, goal scaling is, is one thing that we try to address. The second aspect of productive collaboration, and that's where efficiency comes in, that's where security comes in, which we're talking about, even when we have a gap between, you know, just kind of provisioning a machine 
to 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 uh, safeguarding different parts of of the digital canvas security has become more more, uh, more important than ever before and we have a curated stack which is the microsoft 365 uh, platform suite which looks at collaboration productivity security and totality and the third part is gig workers frontline workers we believe experiences for these folks needs to be completely different and that's where we've curated experiences like Windows 365, et cetera. I won't go into the product detail, but let me pause here. I just wanted to kind of throw open the, the discussion on what you're hearing, what you're learning, and with that, back to you, Aisha. Thank you, Bhaskar. Uh, you've really set the tone for uh, what you have discovered. And let's try to corroborate or find out what people who get their hands dirty daily are seeing. So I'm going to ask you, Vish Vishwajit, uh, you know, uh, we live in a global world. And we work across time zones. So I'm sure you would also find your workforce, you'll find uh, your developers and testers are working on the same product or feature along with others in a different time zone, in a, in a different geography. So how do you achieve productivity, connectedness, collaboration when there's so much going on? What are the tools and technologies that uh, can make this possible? Okay. Interestingly, I think as Bhaskar already said, the constructor said that we can't work silos anymore. I think that's a new trend. And But before I start uh, to answer your question, I just want to connect the dots of my uh, previous organization because I've been in this industry almost two decades where uh, I know the software developer and tester relationship always used to be very complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was very complicated. Um, and when we didn't have that kind of a geograph uh, geographical differences, but now... We have a lots of geographical differences because we have a lots of footprint as your organization. Everybody has does, and uh, the new work model, hybrid work model, is again a, a key factor for that. And that's how this relationship has become more complicated now. Uh, but as rightly said, uh, there are tool and technology. I know. Uh, I think the, you asked the direct question, tool and technology. But before that, I think fundamental will remain the same. Whatever the how uh, much technology evolve. Fundamental will remain the same that we have to strong uh, our processes. And as long as you have a strong process, then only you can build the right technology uh, decision also. Uh, so so I think to do the right collaboration, I think you should do the, uh, build a process like that so that your developer and tester can work together uh, um, from the beginning of the project or any any uh, development uh, per se work which generally we call as a uh, shift left, basically. So when the project is kicked off, there is a development, the current gathering, uh, design phase, development phase, and then deployment phase. So we should involve the tester from the day one. That's how we should do that. And there's an interesting uh, new work model which has evolved right now as a QA ops. So in that, probably the, the quality assurance team works with the with the, your software developer, your IT operations and deployment team together from the day one, which actually help us to do the more collaboration. So that's a, that's a process part. There are other things which you can do as your organization, but from if you talk about the tools, there are multiple tools right now. I think uh, to name some of them, I think I know uh, 2025 or tools are available for doing this, but I know GitHub is open source, uh, but now I think it's called by the Microsoft. It's, it's a wonderful tool, I think, uh, to use for um, uh, this kind of a work, uh, software development life cycle. You can do everything with this. And when I'm talking about this GitHub, and which is a card by Microsoft, there is a, a good tool is Microsoft Visual Studio Team Services, which is now actually Azure DevOps now, yes. which is which is a great tool to explore for this kind of a uh, requirement. And Atlassian is, again, a good tool. I think there are multiple tools available, Zira, uh, and they have a number of tools available for that matter. Uh, Bitbucket, again, uh, I'm recalling some of them because we are using some of them. Uh, uh, um, uh, but nevertheless, I think technology is always there. Uh, but again, I will go back to the fundamental that there are tools and technology available, but we have to take the, when we have a multiple technology and tool available, it's very hard to take the right decision. Uh, and this is actually key factor. Uh, before taking any decision for tool and technology, we should be aware about what is our business need. What will fit into our situation? Because not every tool will work for everybody, which is working for me, which may not be work for uh, other folks. So the, the less identify what is our requirement. And then based on that, let's create some use cases, test cases, do involve some of the team. Uh, across the cross functions team, not only one team who is doing a PUC on those identified tools. So we should do that. 
and then based on that uh, their POC result, then you can decide the technology. And while you are deciding a technology, make sure you are choosing a right partner or OEM. Uh, so because until as you will not have a right implementation of that tool, you will not be able to get the value out of it. Uh, so 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 answer to this, I think uh, I'm I'm able to answer what you asked uh, because lots of things come in my mind when we talk about the collaboration. It's a, it's a big uh, big thing uh, and lots of things like Microsoft Team is available, Zoom and all is also available a tool as a from the end user point of view. And which we are using in the hybrid model uh, for so many years now. I think uh, the technology has matured enough. So, so I think that that's all I want to say. That uh, I think tool and technology are available. Uh, make the choice based on your requirement. That's my recommendation. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Vishwajit. Or uh, assess your requirement before you uh, tabulate your tools. Yeah. That's that's your experience. Uh, good one for everyone. Uh, Anurup, want to come to you uh, because you know uh, the way things are moving. You know, Technology is all pervasive, but in your sector, yeah, is it reaching the end person, your frontline people? Uh, and are they using this productivity and collaboration? Because uh, you know you, you you're meeting the patient, you're doing the test, but the reports are coming elsewhere. Uh, is there integration happening? What are you doing uh, to ensure that your frontline worker is you know completely connected with the the, the knowledge center and is his technology working to be an enabler for you, for them? As I pointed out, with the diversity, work from home, hybrid mode. But in our industry, and especially in the path lab also, the work from home and the this, this kind of work will not happen. Mm. And the patient requirement on the immediate basis. Uh, in a COVID period also, we see it out. They want to see a doctor at the clinic. Uh, though we had done certain kind of uh, Teleconsultation through the through the teams and all, uh, where the report can go to the patient. The teleconsultation will happen, but gradually they said, you know, we want to come and meet the patient, meet the doctor. They want to see the pulse, and everything happens. So in our industry, uh, the work from home is not working over there. Uh, we should just have pointed out uh, business need cross functional processes, and in the same way, we are also having a. If I deploy a tool uh, where the requirement is not there. Uh, for example, I said, hey, nurse, uh, do you, you want to use a team for your tomorrow for a leave apply? Uh, you want to do this for this activity? It is coming from the technology side. Yeah. Technology is picking it out. Till 2019, 20, it was working like the IT is forcing a clinician, cl clinical community or to a nursing community or to enforce, you need to do this. And I'm pushing that this community, please do this, please do this, please do this. Because that is your process. That's the process like the IT is pushing it out. However, uh, the process is not aligned with the what exactly business is asking for. Luckily, COVID had asked us. Uh, now they are not. We are not pushing it out. A business is demanding. We need this. Can you give this? Can you give this? Can you give this? I want to have collaborations. I recall uh, till 2015 or 16, uh, the role of the IT guy is only to have a project to set up. <laughs> I have project to set kiya, please go down to the bar. Now, uh, IT is a point of uh, your boardroom agenda. That, that, that become agenda. How do you secure yourself? Uh, what is the technology you are bringing it out? Uh, how, how can you do more with the less? This is the agenda. So I think uh, for the first point is uh, I, uh, the IT and the cross function team, you mentioned our cross function team. Till the time IT is not become an enabler, the, uh, it will not work. Uh, we need to understand that the IT become really now a backbone of the business. Uh, common goal is more important in, in our industry. Uh, for example, uh, I just give an example. Uh, we implement one solution that the TV display something. No one is using it out. No one actually was not using it out. I went to a doctor. I said, Ki, what is your problem area? He said, hey, Anurup, it's very difficult. What should I do now? Till 9 to 11, what should I do? I visit my patient. I said, we have a tool available where you can see your online appointment. This is our online appointment. He said, oh, ready? Then we build a functionality for him. That now become a collaboration between the clinician and this. He said, uh, the basic, in our healthcare industry, the basic, uh, Troubleshoot is, if the patient will not discharge, a new patient will not come in. He will discharge, a new patient will come. 
a discharge during a discharge for example i am admit to patient i am anesthetic to go back to home in a fast way as my doctor baskar said ki anurup go i want a five month time my discharge go and i need to go back to and meet my sons and meet my children over there so they said ki yeah can i have something where in a one glass i can see these are patient are going to discharge these are for the pharmacy clearance and these are for the clearance and the bill set up and the room that clear so then the next patient can come out for example uh, if the bhaskar will go out then doc arisha will come down for admission process so that's a business requirement and then we said okay the solution will design it out again uh, we should that correctly mention a right tool and a right time also that's the right time you mentioned and right partner a correct partner where we have a collaboration type of thing reward and recognize is also important in the in our industry ki like for example doctor have lots of idea in our in our in our hospital we have 27 hospital across the country there were different ideas uh, in in the finance area for example a doctor payout a small part where my uh, finance my finance department working for 3 days for a doctor payout of sab apai 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 can't i do automation with microsoft part there are different ideas and then we can recognize that part so i think that's this three pillar can have a success for people so uh, now i want to ask a question to kanikil uh, who's uh, the hr head at nan uh, patlab of course uh, we've heard from uh, the healthcare sector already and uh, uh, it's uh, really sad that uh, the healthcare sector did not get any break uh, the, they were always on the go and always working uh, for uh, during the pandemic so uh, you know uh, the the workforce is diverse and you got to make them work during tough times keep them motivated and um, despite their differences their geographic they may be geographical barriers language barriers you you have to keep them together and ensure you have collaboration which is good enough for you to compete with your competition at the same time retain your employees too because uh, th- there will be a, a little bit of burnout at least because covid was not easy and it still uh, remains high pressure so uh, has it been difficult to create a sense of inclusivity in a hybrid workforce um has technology helped you here uh, right i think um, as anurup also said that hybrid was not a thing which was a privilege for us um but what has happened is there is other changes which has happened the, the way work is happening now the whole consumer there is a shift which is happening over there the way they are demanding services the way they expect the frontline employee to today behave is changing rapidly the second thing which is happening is employees are also coming up with different sort of options they want to work so today we have a large workforce which does not work on salary basis they work more on a revenue share basis with us so these are some of the changes which are happening how do you give similar kind of experience to all frontline workers who are either directly employed by you or indirectly uh, it's a challenge which is there so some of the things which have happened with time is tools are helping you enable them to work better so technology was always there so 15 years back hr job was to check the time in time out and hr was deploying technology for that today we don't do that we rather want to check what is the productivity what is the outcomes which are coming and today a lot of tools help us where employee can today see how they are performing what is their own nps score so today any phlebotomist who go to home can quickly know what is at the end of the day his nps score is so he know, he or she knows where they need to improve so these are the changes which were not available earlier and the good part as anurup said in our industry which is happening is people are now adopting it they want to know how the patient has rated them so these are some of the things which are happening and for us also it is becoming easy to give them visibility today um technology is helping us train them so we can have different cohorts of people being trained because i may have five people in south five people in north who are not doing well on say how they have closed the whole uh, patient journey. patient journey mm-hmm. so i can pick up those five five people and train them which was maybe earlier not possible because i have to do a separate batch for north separate for south so these are some of the enablement which have come with technology and the frontline workers are also adapting to some of uh, these thing so inclusivity has become easy 
because of the technology as well as the openness of the end user also. Um, some of the things like different languages, today technology helps you translate. So we use Microsoft Teams. You can see the whole transcription over there. So these are some of the small features which are helping the frontline workers to adopt technology quickly. They are not technology shy anymore. And um, I think they know more technology than us. They are new age people in their 20s. They use more features than we do. So that's, that's the kind of uh, change which has rapidly come in. I think one or two principles have um, remained very fundamental, which is that you still have to communicate physically also and virtually also. So you don't miss out saying that everything has to happen virtually. The balance of physical as well as the digital connect has to remain with the employee if you really want to engage them and take them together with the journey. And the second is that how do you do some pilots, make them success, roll it out? That's another thing uh, which is uh, thanks to IT because they do pilots and do that and that's what we have started doing in HR also. That even if we are now doing one employee communication, one-on-one -on -one, uh, pilot. So we are doing it in one region and then we are making stars out of it and then promoting it. So these are some of the small basic fundamentals which we need to stick to uh, to bring the inclusivity in this time period. Technically, one follow-up question. Sure. You said that your employees have a revenue sharing model. Is this only for employees? Do you also have gig workers? Because I think your line so, of work... So those are also some that. of those gig workers only who come on on call basis and they'll get a revenue share. We have partners also who do that. So we have a all different set of ecosystem uh, which is today, thanks to the technology, we are able to deploy for various set of people. So, Since you have so many different sets working together, is there any issue that you feel uh, where the platform you're using may have a few disconnect or may have some you know, uh, gaps in between? Have you faced anything like that? So I think we face, but the good part is today the uh, technology are so agile that you can have uh, different experience or different set of uh, people, different cohorts can have a different experience altogether. So that's what has enabled us, like for our learning platform. So learning platform is not only for our on-role employees, mm -hmm. it is for our off-role employees, it is even for our partner employees also. Mm -hmm. But the way they visualize it and experience it is different from where way our employee would experience it, etc. So those are some of the things which are enablers, which are there uh, to uh, manage all sorts of uh, cohorts which are working with us. Piyush, uh, I wanted to come to you on the AI talk. Most of the companies are not holding back when it comes to AI and uh, the innovation in the newer technologies. They're doing it for many other things. They're doing it for customer experience. They're doing it for uh, improvement in efficiency. I want to ask from you, do you think there is a good application? You know, can AI and automation be used for greater collaboration and better employee satisfaction and engagement as well? Definitely. Can Definitely. you give us some examples that yes. you may have tried? So I will give you an example, but before that, I think I would like to say uh, AI and automation, mm -hmm. they have a huge potential to significant, significantly uh, improve mm -hmm. the experience, customer experience or the productivity, right? And uh, now you're talking about the examples. Yes, I will give you an example. Uh, so uh, uh, in uh, you know, uh, this uh, hybrid uh, model, where uh, you know people are joining organizations, they never uh, been to office. They are just working from their home, right? And at some point of time, they feel that yes, we are not connected with the company, or maybe I am not getting the information, so that I can feel connected, so that I can uh, feel that yes, I am part of the organization. So they sometimes you know they might feel demotivated, or maybe they might feel stressed out, right? So in that case, maybe you have to keep them engaged. So one thing is, okay, in, in traditional way of working, like, okay, we have this portal and if you need, if you need to check the policy for the leaves, okay, go there. Okay, if you need to apply for the leaves, go there, right? This is the traditional way of working. Other way could be, yes, you can leverage AI so that uh, maybe you can send the nudges to the employees whenever it is happening. Okay. What this else? is what? What are what is the basis of the nudge going? Nudge, Have you nudge. tracked the employee behavior to know? Key? Correct. So this could be based upon the preferences of the employee, or maybe uh, 
this could be based upon the strength or weakness of the employee or it could be based on okay so this particular guy is working in a particular department okay what other peers in the same department are doing which he might or he or she might be missing mm -hmm. so maybe you know you can uh, send those nudges using uh, again you can leverage ai, AI. for that mm -hmm. right and uh, then uh, uh, those insights those nudges you can push to them and again you have the channels uh, collaboration tools for, for that so you can leverage those like so that you know whenever they are logging to for example uh, microsoft teams okay maybe you can create your own apps uh, and uh, you can deploy there on ms teams like in my organization we have done the same thing right uh, uh, employees are getting the experience like okay they are just doing the chatting but they are not chatting they can create their tickets from the chatty chat they can uh, see any policy just chat who can leave that report yes that yeah. right so that uh, kind of uh, uh, you know experiences we are providing to the uh, 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 we don't call them employee we call them colleagues or the people in even you know we don't have hr department this is people enablement wonderful okay so uh, now how you uh, you know provide those nudges or uh, how you provide those insights to those uh, employees again at the back end this AI automation. Mm -hmm. So these are working. All right. Uh, Samuta, I want to ask you, like uh, we have been talking about the, f the frontline worker and how technology is enabling so many things for them. Now, uh, in the power sector, uh, real-time work is very important. Correct. Because if there is an outage or if there is a trip or if there's even a small mismatch, it has a spiraling effect. Correct. So... What are you doing so that the frontline person is connected real time? And what is the impact on their productivity, their engagement, their mental well-being? Do they feel this is embarrassing them? Do they feel it is pressure? Keep us at the right moment I have to. I cannot be late by five seconds. How does it work? Okay. So, uh, firstly, thanks. And thanks all of you because now since you have met the bedrock i can go directly into examples and i want you to acknowledge that other than the health sector power was something yeah, which was working very well uh, uh, so uh, i believe if there has been any biggest change agent in terms of digital transformation this is one with all its you know background so when you talk about frontline yes power is something uh, you know where so frontline i see it in two ways one is people who are actually going to the consumer but to the level of digitization and digitalization that we have achieved the people who are actually running the processes in your offices are actually your frontline workers as well so but i will restrict myself to frontline workers as in people who are facing uh, so uh, i just give some numbers to uh, bring some context into it uh, every year, we uh, install around 2 lakh meters. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are digital and, meters? Uh, yeah, smart meters, smart uh, meters. Yeah, mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we attend around 4 lakh complaints in individual homes, right? Now, just if you take the journey, how the tools and things they have uh, transformed. So, uh, each of them previously had one or duplicate copies because something you have to give to the consumers. And also people have, uh, you know, they come to our call uh, customer care centers where there is a face-to-face -face center. So these are mostly, there are others as well. These are the biggest, big ticket items, if you may. So if you take, you know, uh, the number of sheer papers, right? So in duplicates and triplicates, where some you have to submit and uh, just look at it. So, 2 lakh, and you have gone to 2 lakh homes. You have checked whether the supply can be given the feasibility or not. You have come back with a paper. Some people are entering it. Some are doing quality check on it. Uh, then, uh, if it is deemed, you know, a, a, a piece of paper goes to you for demand note payment. So, the payment that you have to make. And when you make that payment, a piece of paper travels to the someone who will install the meter. He goes, leaves the paper with you, comes back, someone enters, someone checks, and that goes into the system. So, so every year, uh, we were cutting down uh, one forest at a time, right? So, uh, so I I can I cannot emphasize 
you know anymore on once you have put it on a mobile mm. uh, and with some basic you know the errors that can they can make but you can actually get it validated this entire 15 20 lakh papers went out of this thing and productivity wise you know as an organization you know 60 70 people who were doing the duplicate work at the background that completely goes away so do they feel more motivated do they feel yeah, now I, my time is more useful i'm being more with my time yes yes you know handling these many if they handle say eight cases per day or 10 cases per day now i'll come to two parts of it and how technology and we didn't stop at that it was very easy because it has served my purpose my cost has gone down uh, uh, you know the time to uh, getting a consumer into your net has gone down drastically we could have stopped over there so this i am talking about the tools part of it uh in the meter thing uh what we found out so here something comes as data observability in this entire transaction you are keep creating a transactional data which you use for taking into the system and some by products are there which is loading your system and you would be foolish if you are not using it for example uh if you are looking at what's the point to point timings because the stampings are coming you can get an idea who is punching where you know whether they are doing at the side they are doing away from the side so this started coming the second one was uh, uh one big problem comes that you know whenever you have a new house until and unless you have an electricity connection nobody is going to stay in the dark right so if someone is going to install a meter and you are not at the house uh what can we do and we had a lot of failed things as well you know uh, as in you know people went over there they were not there there to come back so whether you can put an appointment schedule which mm. you know uh, so the intent of, of how you are using it so this is one part of how you have enabled so in meter i can go on and on and on, and on every day we are changing you said a very important that whether i i am in a very risky business you know any uh, you name any hazard big hazard fall from height uh electrocution most of our people works on live line if i start switching off uh, for every work uh the city will remain dark half of the times so what can you do to make sure because it's a very big you know zinda rahega if they are alive they can do the work right so uh and most of these workers are you know what you they call outsourced but we don't call them we call them business associates so uh, how what can we do to do this so here is a big role of technology so safety what we do is we have an, a very comprehensive system uh, where any kinds of anomaly that is noted in the system whether there is a consumer or our own people in fact it is a part of our kra to report safety incidents so it's put in a platform uh, similarly the network is such in a way that it is inherently risky so what was done so this job every job needs a job safety analysis this was plugged into the simple transactional system as well how it works if there is something that i know in the system that it's risky if he is going to work on that pole it will be an engineering control that he cannot work on that so first he will get that what already i know in the system is there what kind of risks is exist at, at that particular site and if the risk is beyond a certain threshold it will not allow them to work until and unless a shutdown is taken and that shutdown uh, unique number is at site verified online from our power control system so you are not simply allowing him to go over there so these are and uh, so we also give trainings but if you say my risk is going at height so if i am giving that uh, training of going to, you know working at height he still has set risk if he is in the training so there the only area where we have used vr till now is to eliminate this kind of risk right yeah. and this is uh, you know where you have to go the other part that is there uh, again when you observe the data uh, 25 to 26% of the cases where you you uh, you know give us a off supply complaint it is found that it is not in, in our purview that is it is beyond the main switch or mcb of your house which is uh, your point, our point of commencement of supply two hours a person had to wait uh, to know that uh, you know so two hours of my person is wasted two hours of another person is wasted to and i go and tell you that 
if the problem is in your system, right? So imagine the kind of heartburn for both the people. With the smart meter coming, there is a functionality we used for this. It's called meter pinging. So before I go to site, I can ping the meter. And if the meter gives me a response, that means that the meter is okay. The problem is beyond that. So there are a lot of stories, but this is how you build on a basic tool, bring in checks. And uh, the another thing that is not technology, but it's very important is uh, it ended as a transaction, right? So a person to be, you know, to feel alignment, say a uh, eighth, tenth, or you know, ITI, he has to feel that he is owning it. If he is able to convey to the uh, to the end consumer that what he did, because that will uh, inculcate a sense of pride in him. Yeah. So the story is endless, but that's how we put thought into details, and wherever technology can play its bit, we try to do it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming here, sharing your insights uh, with us and your experiences of how technology is, you know, helping you build a work culture where even in hybrid work, uh, collaboration is happening, productivity is high, and employees also feel happy and engaged. So we, there are a few things that have come up in this discussion is that, of course, there's no talking back on technology. And now, thankfully, technology is not just the IT department's uh, uh, sphere, it is a board level decision. It is something that is being uh, uh, seen as an enabler for business growth and for reaching the objectives of which the company has been set up. Uh, everyone will have to find their own, uh, you know, fit between uh, balancing the digital and physical to get uh, employees to be engaged and happy and stay with the organization. And uh, the use of new technologies like AI. Uh, machine learning and uh, the new age technologies uh, is being used and developed for hybrid work uh, in a way that you will get information where you will act and not react. So that will also uh, help you uh, with the workforce being engaged and happy. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, pleasure to have all of you with us. Uh, I have a request. We have a QR code there. So I would request you to please scan it and give us your feedback of uh, what you're feedback for this entire round table is thank you all for joining us thank you very powerful thank you for hosting and moderating this so wonderful thank you, thank you. Thank you.